Yeah, I'm buying a bunch of flags. I'm buying all kinds of shit. You can't see, but the wall in front of me has all my swag on it. Fucking, I got all my pictures and posters in front of me. And then I'm buying a ring light, dude. It's This is about to get real. That's a move. I will not be fucking showed up on my own stream. Check, 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 check. Okay, I can check my levels and the on deck. I, dude, thank God I got my glasses on. I can't see shit. You got the turtle boys on. Them turtle boys. All right. I'm good when you are. Send it. God, I'm looking at so much shit right now, dude. I have I have like my laptop up top on a box, and then I have my phone with our ideas on it, and then the interface is right in front of me that I keep tapping buttons to see if everything's okay. I just hung these like five minutes ago because I'm in my empty guest room right now. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I did it kind of as a joke because obviously this one's Donnie's. This is... Um, Project Mew, and then this one is for dollar beef bowls from Yoshinoya. Um, How did you get that? Is there a website for that, or you just stole it? Yahoo Auctions. Uh. <laughs> I literally paid like I think three bucks for this thing. And I was like, I'm gonna throw up a motherfucker beef bowls, dude. Yeah, yeah. I'm super jealous, yeah. actually. Yoshinoya is my go-to. 24 hours, just, just oh, three cheese bowl. Oh. Done, done, dude. I. uh I really wanted, I don't know if you remember, you you probably do, when Lawson's would have their Christmas um, promotions, they would have those big banners with all the, the Lawson's girls in mm -hmm. like Santa costumes. Yes. And dude, I want I want to get one of those so bad. And when I was looking, they were like $48 because it was probably like Lawson's employees that were selling them, you know? Yeah. Um, we're already in the episode. This is the intro. Um, you wrote down, so our first topic is is what's the biggest regret from japan and boy do i have regrets but obviously you wrote this down for a specific reason well i mean yeah i guess my biggest regret is not getting enough sea time like you were going all over doing all kinds of track days and you know you drove the shit out of that Atuza, and i had the skyline i won't fucking kick that dead horse again but even with my gtr i was like i'm gonna track this thing but I spent so much time like working on it that I never got to drive it. So, you know, I have like this. I had like a list of all the tracks I wanted to hit fucking Fuji freaking uh, twin ring Motegi. And, you know, they do like open track days, but I never got to go. And then like the one time my car was actually ready to go, it was like just before winter kicked off. And I called yeah. um, as out Maury Speed Park. I think that's what it was. Not not the drift one. The other one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the road racing fucking closed. And they're like, yeah, we're close for the season. I was like, are you fucking shitting me? So I didn't get to travel. I didn't get to drive on any tracks. I spent up all my money fixing my damn car, dude. I completely wasted my time in Japan. Like, completely. Um, I know. It's hard, right? Because you want to say you wasted your time. I mean, yeah, I think looking back, you definitely do. You know, you're like, well... I spent a lot of time playing Fortnite when I could have been doing X, Y, or Z. You know what I mean? I was fucking dropping on Tomato Town, and I could have been turbo swapping my SR20. Um, I never played Fortnite, just for the record. Uh, I got my first dub in solos <laughs> Fortnite in Japan, dude. Let's go. <laughs> um, yeah, I think. For, do you have like any like actual regrets? Because you were much more out there. Oh yeah, that. no, I definitely do. And I think hindsight's twenty twenty. Mm -hmm. I'm going to move this bad boy. Uh, yeah, dude, I think when I look at the cars that I had, I really, really wish I would have just spent the extra money and bought like a nice car mm -hmm. um, because I had the Alteza, which I love. And I like I don't regret having the Alteza at all. What I do regret is not spending enough um, time or money on like everything else. You know, I think because the Alteza was like my main car. So I spent the majority of my time on that one. Whereas, you know, we had Jess's S15. I think I talked about this in the last episode. Um, I just like, I cannot believe that I didn't do anything with it, man. Like that was the frustrating part for me was just being like, here's this car and I have a whole spare drivetrain for it. And I have a whole spare interior and a spare dashboard and a spare everything. And I just didn't do, and it's, it's, let me be very clear. This wasn't even my car. This was my wife's car. Um, and so I think I feel bad in that regard too, because like that was her dream car. And then she never had a chance to like really do anything with it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. 
How many? So I remember Jess. So I know Jess wanted that Sylvia, and didn't she also wanted that Chaser? What she got, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, Jumpin talks all the time about all like the dream cars that she wants, and she never gets them. And I'm like, why don't? If you want it, just go get it. Like, be like me. Just say fuck it. Throw caution to the wind. Spend your entire savings and buy what that's, you want to buy. Yeah, that's what I told my dad, dude. We were on New Year's and and. You know, my dad was, I forget, dude, we were talking about something. And, you know, he said, like, Happy New Year. And I said, I said, yeah, I really got to go ham this next year. And he was like, well, what do you mean? Of course, because he's 60 and he doesn't know what ham means. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, man, I just got to, you know, I got to finish the SC300. I got to turbo the 240. I got to get the SEMA fucking slammed and, and <laughs> like, fucking nuts with it. <laughs> it's not that low. It really isn't. It's like my wheels fitment is really, really good, but it's still got two inches until it's on the ground, like mm. on the ground, on the ground. But uh, with the wheel setup, I can't get it that low anyways, nor do I want it that low. Um, but point being is like, it's it's how I want it now. And it is lower than it was um, on my previous suspension setup. And so, you know, point being is just, I want to be able to like sauce in everything and spend a lot of time working on stuff because I'm still in that same process, right? Where it's easy to get in a routine and come home and be like, okay, I'm just going to like watch the Witcher for four hours, you know, or I'm going to sit and play among us or Jackbox with my friends or whatever. It's like, there is, it, it's so easy to get caught up into that. Like, Oh, I had a full day at work and now I'm exhausted. Um, that I told my pops, I'm like, I'm just going to fucking race car it out, bro. I'm going <laughs> to, <laughs> it's like, I'm going to do everything I didn't do. Um, and so, God, what was the fucking question here? Um, it had something to do with your biggest regrets, but that does bring up a point for me where like, you know, you're talking about working on all these cars and stuff and dude, I haven't turned a wrench in like, it feels like forever, like on any of my cars, right? I'm getting super like complacent. Like I, I was looking at today, I was looking at trying to buy a A86 and I, cause I'm just kind of like over it now. I'm like, I just want to move on to something else, but, um, right. I need to like buckle down and I guess this is a good way to start like New Year's New Year's resolutions because it's like, okay, 2022, we've got big plans for the, the podcast. But what about like your personal projects? All my New Year's resolutions are car related, I think, because I've just been on such a break from everything car related, you know, mm -hmm. that it's like it's like this is the year because I, I think I got so far from doing anything. I mean, and it's been an eventful couple of years, not even with the pandemic, but just you know, we bought a house, we moved, we're making all new friends. Like mm -hmm. everything is, is, has changed. And so for now it's just like, I've, I've worked on them here and there just to do things that I needed to do. But now it's like, okay, let's just go and get this shit done. You know, like I've been emailing three piece for the past month to try to get a new barrel so I can finish my blitzes to put on the 240. Mm -hmm. It's all like domino effect. It's like, okay, I need to do this and then I can do this and then I can do that. Yeah. Um, and that's what I really like about item B and you and I have talked about this off camera is, um, he just has a really good outlook on things like in terms of productivity and getting shit done. And it shows because all of his shit is insane. Yeah. I mean, educate me um, on this guy. Cause I, I see his Instagram, but I don't, what does he do? Evan has Other been around forever dr drifting. Like, so his, his, his big thing I think is like flipping cars and parts and things like that. Now yeah. I'm speaking from an outsider, you know, I don't know Evan personally. I don't know him historically, like for the past 10 or 15 years. Like I knew him when, uh, or I heard of him when he built that RX-7, God, mm. 10, 10 years ago. It was a long, it was a while ago now. Um, but it was like the first or one of the first like truly hot boy builds, I think, where you looked at and you're like, fuck, man, like that shit is next level. <laughs> like Wait. it was he took like the classic Japanese styling and uh -huh. then just made it fucking like baller as shit. Mm -hmm. I don't think I've ever seen this car. Oh, it is give me some nasty, later, bro. bro. It is nasty. It is like favorite FC RX seven of all time. Mm -hmm. Um, it's like what it's like what you want to build in Need for Speed when you play it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But it's like what you want to build in Need for Speed if you have the patience to do the whole livery and the body shit. I always like, okay, tangent. Whenever I play Forza, dude, I'm like, beep, boop, bop, beep, boop, bop. Let's get all the engine internals upgraded. Boop, boop. You know, like, let's do the fucking body kit. Do, do, do. Let me throw some, uh, you know, T7Rs on it. Do, 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 whatever. 
And then as soon as it comes to like paint and body, I'm like, nah, she's all right. <laughs> and like, I know that there's people that are the opposite. They're like, okay, this sticker needs to go on the windshield at a 45 degree angle. And then we're going to layer these stickers as well. Or like, I'm going to make a curve and then this other curve. So it makes an S and then I'm going to create this custom decal. You know what I mean? Like they spend so much time on this and mm -hmm. I don't give a fuck about it. If I really want to, I'll like look at liveries and I'll go anime girl and then it'll pull up like all the Utashas and I'm like, bet. Okay. That's the one we're going with. <laughs> Dude, me and you are so the opposite. Dude, when I play fours and now we're off in the wilderness now, but whenever I play fours, let's I go. Play, I play it like real life. So like, I'll get like a BMW. I was doing an M3 and it's like, okay, I have like 15 grand to spend. So let me see what I'm going to spend it on. Granted, I, ha I have like 200,000 credits or whatever, like whatever number was, I want to spend only 15 grand on this car. And so it's not that fast. <laughs> it just, it's, it's got a couple of body parts on it. And then I'm driving around getting my ass whooped by everybody. Everybody puts like fucking V8 fucking twin turbocharger and everything. And I'm just going here slow as shit, but it looks nice. But it I looks nice. I, sometimes I'll build like intentionally slow cars. You know what I mean? I'll build like a, a 350Z and I'll be like, okay, I'm going to keep this thing stock power, but I'm going to do all the arms and the diff and all the transmission shit. I'm just going to keep it. And then I drive it and I'm like, Damn, this shit kind of ass though. <laughs> like this, this C class car is garbage. Dude, I freaking paid. <laughs> so in the new Forza, there's two versions of the Subaru. Um, I don't know. I think it's the GB or whatever the fucking model is. The new Subaru, uh, WRX. And in order to get the Varus body kit, you have to buy the fucking. Uh, I think it's like the 207 because you can't put it on the regular one that comes with the game. So oh, I paid like you. five bucks to get this Subaru and put the yeah. various body kit on it and make it look all <laughs> nice. And it's slow yeah. as shit. And I'm like trying to tune it and like put whatever mods I can. And I can't win any races, but that shit looks fucking sick. <laughs> so there goes five dollars down the drain. I I think I've spent real money on it like once or twice. And I, I think I've spent more real money on Corsa because to buy those car packs, you know? Yeah. Because they'd be like, here's your JDM Legends car pack. And it would be, you know, a 240 or whatever, whatever it was, like an RX-7, an 8.6. And I was like, bet. Yo, speaking um, of Corsa, but, real quick, have you seen the, uh, like, the legit virtual drifting championship they're coming out with? You know, I'm concerned about this for a reason. Why? But because we talked about doing it. Yeah. <laughs> well, whenever, whenever we talk about it, and that was part of... <clears throat> That was part of the thing with the podcast too, is we talked about doing the podcast for a while. And then when we started and I was like, fuck, there's already other people doing this, man. What the, what are we doing? It like was, it was so discouraging. And then I think I just, well, that was, I mean, we started this when I was a little bit younger. And I think as I get older, I'm like, people are just going to do things and you just got to keep doing it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Anyways, huge. Anyways. So yeah, Darius and I, back, background, I guess, Darius and I talked about this and we kept it really hush-hush. And we were like, yo, what if we did an Assetto Corsa um, competition, you know, and like sponsored it and there were real prizes and you made real rules for it. We fucking, we have a doc in our Google Drive right now that's like, you know, potential rules and prizes and stuff like that that we just held on to and we haven't talked about it in months. Um Anyways, go on. So somebody's actually doing this? Yeah, so it's called the Virtual or the Drift Masters Virtual Championship. And they're actually Drift sponsored Masters. by they're sponsored by Red Bull. They've got like actual they've got Link on board, Liquid. So basically, we could we could never get on this level. But No, I think <laughs> Dude, I think you could. So is this linked with the the European dudes? I don't know. I I mean, I know they've got I'm looking right now. So the, it's Drift Masters European Championship. Uh -huh. I wonder if it's the same thing because they're already tied with Red Bull and stuff. So I wonder yeah. if they were like, yo, fam. I mean, they have pro drifters. That's the thing. They've got freaking, I see Ryan literal like practicing all the time for this. And then I think right. they got that. Who's that dude? I don't want to, I'm going to fuck his name up, but they were in formula drift like two years ago. They had the twin S 15s and like dominated everybody. Not the guy that won, but like the second place guy. It's like Peter or something or other. Oh, I, I know who you're talking about. And he's going to, like, dominate, probably. It's just kind of cool seeing, like, the virtual, you know, drifting starting to, like, uh, get up there. And honestly, I mean, if we're being realistic, this is probably going to be, like, the future of it. 
like like sustainable it's yeah. not wasteful or bad for the environment yeah i mean at, with the metaverse coming out everybody's going to be you know in the metaverse and it's like oh we're, we're going to a track day and you put on your fucking vr goggles and go over to the track and do a little drifting that's sad dude <laughs> it's only sad because there's no risk in that you know <laughs> um yeah. Damn, that is crazy to think about because you're absolutely right. Is is that's probably going to be the the move moving forward? Mm-hmm. Um, hmm. You got me fucking sad as shit now, dude. <laughs> Do you want to get into um, some of these uh, topics that we got on here? Oh, absolutely. And we didn't really finish the the regrets. I don't think did we? Uh no. But I don't know. I was just being like sentimental, and then it's going to end up <laughs> circling back to the same thing every time. Because, you know, for me, it felt like it feels like a, like a once in a lifetime kind of thing. Because it's like, how am I going to get back to Japan other than, you know, trying to learn Japanese and get hired by a company? Like, I don't have any connections over there. I guess I could try to get a Oh, you're job, saying but... you're saying like to live there. Yeah. So it's like, unless I make a ton of money and be able to go back over there and, you know, do it on my own, which you know, yeah. I guess is possible, but. I don't know. I just get nostalgic. Whenever I start drinking, it's just like, man, I fucked up. I'll never get that chance again. Okay. Well, I think that's why it's like this year specifically is trying to go like as hard as I can here. You know what I mean? Because it's mm-hmm. like you can think about that, but it, there's so many good opportunities in the States too. Um, and, and I think every community has its its perks. You know, I think when you're in Japan and I speak, I say this for me is it's I think it's really easy to be condescending. You know, it's easy to be like, oh, we've got the best drifting in the world. Derp, derp, derp. Like everything else is sucks. It pales in comparison. But every community does have like its its perk. Um, and especially like here in Texas, I think, you know, with Lone Star Drift and the stuff that Aaron's doing with with Drift Week. Um, and then you've got Club Loose that just got a carding complex down here. Like, I think there's some cool stuff happening. And so that's why it's like now, you know, I'm just going to do cool shit where I'm at and then have fun with it you know and so like yeah japan has ebisu and it's got you know motorland sp it's got motorland mikawa it has may and you know it has like all these legendary tracks um but i, th- I still think it's something where it's like you could be friggin saucing and having a good time wherever you're at yeah i guess i shouldn't just let the dream die i know i do feel like the older i get and the less and less i like spend time doing car stuff the more you know it's kind of passing me by a little bit like, right. That's what I was saying. Like being in my Japan was my prime opportunity. But in reality, I have a car outside. I can just go out and start whipping right now if I really wanted to. But I don't know. You should. I'm starting to become more you of should. a mature person. You know what I do? I just wait for rain and then I just send it. You oh, know? dude, I completely forgot to tell you. I almost fucking smashed the fucking stage here. <laughs> like it was super. <laughs> I was going to work on Friday morning and it was like a uh, super icy and snowy. And my dumb ass looks at that like as free drifts. So I'm right. like, they have these <laughs> B roads here that are super tiny. And I'm like back there fucking being a dumb ass, fucking sliding all over the place. And I go to slide uh, like right around the turn. And I don't want to make it sound like I'm fucking Tokyo drifting. I'm just baby sliding. Like I'll just like put it into a low gear then like you know give it a little bit of gas like oh ooh, ooh, ooh. and then yeah. i got over to uh like the road right in front of base by the way and i was i was turning right i snapped it back to the left and it fucking hit a patch of black ice and fucking hit like this mud berm on the side luckily it was like it caught the wheel but like i said it was wet so it was just all mud and shit and it just flew up on the side of the car nothing got like destroyed <laughs> no arms were bent thank god but that was a fucking ass pucker moment. Yeah, a hundred percent. I did that with my parents' car one time, and it's the same thing. It was snow. Snow's a lot harder because it's less predictable. You know, mm-hmm. like it's the easier one to learn, like counter steering. I think. Mm-hmm. I I guess you know what I mean. Like if you were to say like easiest, intermediate, hardest in terms of like learning how to drift or slide or whatever, um, snow is definitely the easiest. But it doesn't act the same as either rain or. Um, just dry pavement you know Mm -hmm. because it's like you have to counter steer the wheel the wheel's not going to move on its own and it's it's just you could slide forever on snow and so the only benefit i could see of like that is you can kind of plan where you want to put the car in snow if there if there's no ice Mm -hmm. um but aside from that that's like the only benefit i can think of um you know and then rain and and dry are are somewhat similar um yeah. 
in terms of characteristics. I, I should reiterate. Oh, uh, I didn't finish. I was in my parents. So I grew up and um, my parents had this Benz SUV. I forget what it what kind of was. It was a GLK, GLK four, I don't know, GLK 450 or some shit like that. Anyways, it was like the biggest SUV that they made. And this was like my parents, like they were so proud of this and they just bought it. And it was like the nicest shit they ever owned. And mm -hmm. I was driving it one night and I was like, we're going to fucking whip the Benz dog. And I was like, God, how old was I? I was like 17, maybe. And I came home and in the north, so I grew up in Michigan, in the north, they put these metal stakes on the side of the road so that the snow plows know where people's yards begin, right? So that they're not plowing people's grass and shit. So they put these metal stakes up and I came sliding around this corner and I came like dangerously close to these stakes to just side swiping like the whole car. And uh, I just, I was like my mirror on the passenger side was maybe an inch away from smacking one of the stakes and i was still sliding towards the the grass but i was like i gotta power out of this shit or something you know what i mean so i just like floored it going straight hoping that it would stop me from going sideways so i guess there was a learning lesson there i don't <laughs> <laughs> like a dry a driving learning lesson you know what i'm saying like that's the only benefit i could see um but yeah it was a weird trip and, and we do have questions coming in the chat here so this is a new format for us for those that are listening on podcasting after we release this is we are going to do this live and then as we get questions in the chat we'll just answer them at the very end of the episode so if you want to hear these episodes first come check us out on twitch um we're also going to be airing video episodes on youtube so moving forward we're going to have video episodes all the time no matter what i shouldn't say no matter what we might have times where we can't but um Yes, yeah, so you'll be able to check us out on video. Crazy face reveal. We didn't really tease about that, I guess, at the beginning of the episode and be like, yo, we're on video now. We just we just started talking about uh, whatever we started the episode with. It was a bunch of bullshit. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if it's a face reveal. You can go to my Instagram and see how ugly I am. That's true. Yeah, we always tease like, hey, this is us on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I was excited for this episode because it was all bullshit, dude. And I was so stoked to do that again because I feel like we've tried... Uh, I shouldn't say tried, but we've been talking a lot about like drifting specific things. So I just, am, you know, the chance to, to bullshit about shit that doesn't mean anything is exciting. Yeah, I'm excited to hang out. Um, do you um, want to get to Charlton's question that he put in the chat? Well, let's check that one at the end of the episode. Okay. Um, we'll I do want to move on to... So Darius and I, <laughs> we've had this idea sitting for a long time and we haven't talked about it. Um Drift teams that should exist, but don't like fake names for drift teams. Hmm. And I'm really proud of my second one, but <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to lie. I sat for like a good 15 minutes trying to think of stuff and I only came up with one. So if you guys in the chat can think of drift <laughs> teams that should exist, please put it in there to fill this out for us. <laughs> Go, go, donkey smash, dude. I'm so proud of it. <laughs> See, but I'm so proud. Go, go, donkey smash. Now, hear me out. Um, I think this name in an aggressive looking font, and it would be like, go, go, donkey smash. And I think it makes no sense, and it would be so funny. And if you stylized it right, I think that shit would slap way too hard. <laughs> I mean, the reality is, that sounds like something that already exists in Japan. Like in Japan. Exactly. Just, that's my, that's just, the thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's always like the most obscure. I was like, okay, what are words that have never been put together before? Because that's like, you know, they, they should have like a drift team name generator where it just puts like entirely new phrases together that have mm -hmm. like, you know, I do, sexy I sexy nights saying. probably never been said before <laughs> ever like damn those are some sexy nights dude yeah i mean i guess since i don't speak japanese i can't even imagine in my head how those conversations happen like how you're gonna have like a bunch of dudes around and they're like throwing shit out there and obviously they're speaking in japanese and they get to sexy nights and it's like that that doesn't make any sense and they're like yeah that sounds like something americans would say like, yeah um no but maybe uh, in like low, dubbed versions low brain you know hmm I love it, though. I will say, man, I'm clipping. I'm fucking hot as shit in this episode. Um, I will say I really like the name Low Brain because I think it just sounds fucking dope as shit. Yeah. Um, yeah. So anyways, 
go go donkey smash if you guys want to steal that and start that team i would be fucking ecstatic yeah. um and then my next one is a little reminiscent of risky devils but i feel like it would still work sly devils now hear me out s l i d e slide v i l s see what i did there it's all one <laughs> word sly devils and so it could be either be sly space devils you sly devils or it could be slide evils oh shit dude what are we doing I'm really trying to sell this one double entendres for days dude i will sell shit well let's Anyways. leave it up to the people put a thumbs up if you would name your drift team slid devils that's what I'm slide <laughs> slid devils or is it is it slid devils that sounds terrible <laughs> it could be whatever you want it to be you just bastardized my shit <laughs> What's well, like um? What's that other team? Freaking uh, shady, nasty, but Shad Dynasty. Shad Shut Dynasty. up. <laughs> I think shady, there's a specific nasty. video where he's like, "It's not shady, da nasty. It's Shad Dynasty." But um, you know, for real, it, it depends on your mood. You can say it however you want to say. See, now I'm ashamed of mine because mine had <laughs> took no creativity. I didn't make any <laughs> words. Okay. Hear me out. I do like yours, and I like it for a specific reason. Yeah, I'll, I'll say I'll say it after you. You know what? You know what it. would sound better if I made it one word. So it was just like Navy Federal, Navy Federal. Like if you say it fast enough, it goes <laughs> together. But it's just Navy Federal, the drift team. And the reason why I picked this one is because I don't know about you, but Navy Federal finances all my cars, and I imagine that they finance a ton of cars that are getting drifted or just even driven in the states. Period. So yo, it's what if? It only makes sense that they would have their own drift team. What if instead of Navy Federal, we did Chase Bank? Because you always be chasing the banks, dude. Okay, where's the bars? I'm Drop the mic. Gonna end this stream right now, <laughs> just to save you guys. <laughs> Chase Bank. I mean, actually, now that the more I say it, Chase Bank, that is a good name. But you'd have to like change the spelling, or else Chase Bank will come for you. You won't be chasing shit, but a fucking a soup kitchen. You got hammer time. You got double take. You know, what are some like what? What's like an actual like good team name where you'd be like, you know what, this shit kind of slaps. I mean, Shad Dynasty. I already said that one. Um, I'm That's trying a real. Think I'm, I'm, but I, yeah, you want me to just make one up on the spot because I don't think I can. Um, Bomb Squadron, done, dude. Bombs. Jesus Christ, you're good. You, you name want... your shit Bomb Squadron, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Even just Bomb Squad. I think that would be so tight. Yeah, that would be cool if everybody showed up in like EOD gear. And like you're just that'd be fucking terrible. What do you mean? Your elbows. <laughs> and you gotta commit to the fucking the team. It's not just a team, it's a lifestyle. The hurtful locker. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I'm there's done, teams dude. out there. So everything stupid. good has been taken. You know, there's moist boys. Who would have ever thought in a million years there'd be a team called Moist Boys? But Yo, Moist Boys fucking slaps, too. <laughs> they, they slap. I'm with it. Um, yeah. We have exhausted this topic, I think. Oh, my God, dude. That's so funny. And you see, now this um, next topic you have, I'm just going to go right on board right now and say, if Fleshlight <laughs> wanted to come and sponsor us, I would be down for that. Like, I'm not bullshitting you. And this has nothing to do with drifting. This is all Man. about self-care. You know, at the end of the day, you need to take care of yourself. So, Fleshlight, you want to come and sponsor us? Just hit me up. You can slide into my personal True. DMs. Dude, if they did, I'd be astonished. I'd be like, why are you listening to us in the first place? <laughs> um, yeah, I think I think that or Blue Chew, you know, mm -hmm. would be would be this the shit. I'd be like, you know what? Game over, dude. Like, come on board. Um, but I... I, so we did not introduce this topic. So we, Darius and I were like, what are the worst sponsors you could think of for Sincerely Japan? And in the notes, I wrote down Fleshlight or Blue Chew. Done. One of those two things would be, you said you were on board immediately, and it's still a no for me, dog. Like, okay, I'm well, not. Wait. So even I, this topic, I'm like. Well, just I'm going to paint a picture for you. So imagine Fleshlight's emails you and they're like, here's a blank check. You could build whatever car you want, but you have to put a gigantic Fleshlight decal on the side of your car. Would you do no. it? No, no, absolutely not. <laughs> absolutely I not. I mean, I would. Maybe I'm, if I could do like a Fleshlight silhouette, you know what I mean? Like a long go. ways, like sideways on the exactly. car. And then I had text, like subtlety, you know, <laughs> if you know, you know. 
If you know, you know, I would just do that. I would do a silhouette if I had to. And that's like, I wouldn't even consider it. <laughs> um, blank check. Uh, also, Charleston had a really good point. If you did Chase Bank, but it's only chasers in the in the group. We keep leveling this shit up, dude. <laughs> um. Anyways, God. <laughs> Those were the only two I could think of that would be like truly terrible sponsors. No, I shouldn't say terrible sponsors. Like they do sponsor shit too. Mm -hmm. Um damn dog but yeah i uh i think either of those i think anything car related is like a safe ish bet you know what i mean <laughs> i'm trying to think of like what's the what's like the maybe like the cringiest like car brand that would be like hey we want to collaborate with you guys scion oh and fuck scion out of here dude here i'm <laughs> i'm offended for them <laughs> i okay hear me out I still want an XB, like a first gen mm. toaster XB. I actually and saw a video of a guy shooting rollers. It was a roller of his XB. It's like it's like a like dude. a turquoise color. And it's like slammed, but it just looks so funny. There's like no suspension travel, so it literally looks like a yeah, toaster right. just sliding down the road. They oh, are oh so hard, dude. Um, yeah, I just, <laughs> I just, I don't know, dude. I think I think they're sick. I think they look great. Uh, they're super practical, but I also had two fun cargos when we were in Japan, and that's like mm -hmm. you know the same. It's the same chassis. Um, I didn't know that. So yeah, so I'm very partial to just that because it was super reliable. It rode really well. You know, it got insane gas mileage. It was fun. So I would um, like I would like to fuck with a uh, was it is it a Nissan Cube? Is it Nissan? yeah? I like those too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nissan Cube. Like I like I, how the asymmetrical look. I don't know if you ever like looked at it from the back, mm, but like the window comes in from one side, like along the entire back. It's like I don't know. Right. I just like funky looking cars like that. So that'd be cool. Nah, you're right. You're right. I um, I think I think they get underestimated because when I had the fun cargo, I parted out an entire Sylvia, like an S14. The only thing I didn't take out of it was the drivetrain, um, because I already sold it, but. I stuck that entire car in the back of the fun cargo. I had like, God, what did I have, dude? I had all the brakes. I had all the seats out of it. I had the uh, the bumpers, the side skirts, a set of wheels, a bunch of interior panels. Dude, like I fit like as much of this car as I could in the back. I fit a motorcycle in it, dude. Um, and they're tiny. Like they're not a big car, but it's like, the outside dimensions are are negligibly larger than the inside dimensions. You know what I mean? Like they use the space really well. Mm -hmm. And um, before I had my bike registered, I stuffed it in there in the back backwards. And then I just put the back wheel between the two front seats. <laughs> and then that was it, dude. And then I strapped it down and I was like, holy shit, I just fit a fucking bike inside of my K car. It's not a K car, but it's close. Yeah. Um, I mean, a useful daily cannot be overstated. And like we've kind of touched on that before. Yeah, 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 like, for sure. And in Japan, that is the land of useful dailies. Like, you remember Jumbin's little uh green Hummer thing she had? Right. But Dude, it's kind that of that awesome. It's kind of that by nature because of JCI. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like the guys that had these crazy drift cars generally didn't register them. Like some of them did. But I found that I think the market for guys that just got drift cars and then left them at the track or had them as a specific purpose built car, you know, like I think that was a lot more common. Mm -hmm. There's like there's guys here that all just daily their drift cars, you know what I mean? Um, which I mean, I did that too. And like some guys do that. But um, I, I think over there, it's easier to have dailies just because they're, you know, you can't really mess with them. They're easier to JCI uh, because you're not doing anything to them like I don't know. I think that's just a, a kind of byproduct, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, we got but, some stuff in the chat that I just wanted to touch on real quick. Uh, oh, I didn't mean bet. to chop Jared, but just uh, long roof, uh, long roof flex. Jonah. Uh, Jonah, my bad, said that uh, Japan has some <laughs> ideas and just wagons. I think he, he's mean to say that like Japan has like crazy cars, but pretty much they make a wagon out of everything. Like every yeah, platform they, do. they have, they make a wagon out of it. And I'm here for it. Like, obviously, yeah. I'm the guy with the wagon, but like every sports car, not every sports car, every major sports car they have, they take that platform and turn it into a wagon. And it's fucking amazing. Like, did you know, you know, R31s, right? Yeah. Have yeah, you yeah. ever seen an R31 wagon? 
I almost bought one, dude. They're they're sick. Dude, that's like my <laughs> dream car, bro. But every wagon that they make, generally speaking, is like the grandpa trim. You know what I mean? Like yeah. very seldom did the wagons come with like a favorable um drive layout in front of rear wheel or all wheel you know or a mm-hmm. favorable engine combo like th- some of them did obviously like the spec b wagons um for the subies mm-hmm. uh but in the the legacy stis and stuff like that but i find that more often than not the wagons are just not and that's why i never ended up buying one was because um they just weren't the right trim level it wasn't what i wanted it was very much like a daily you know economy kind of car and then every now and then they would sprinkle in like a really cool wagon variant yeah well i mean when i first got here my number one goal was to buy an altezza wagon i can't remember i think it's called a a gita in japan i wanted one of those so bad and that's what i was looking for but everybody wanted just a little bit too much money for and i couldn't find a manual one they were all automatic and i wanted to go drifting so I had to let that dream go until I got a wild hair. There you go. A Guido or a Sport Cross. But, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Back to that that XB video you're talking about, though. So one of our topics was at what age do you have to admit it's not cool to blow your back out in a static whip anymore? <laughs> and I definitely. There was a big changeover, I think, between like 25. And like, I don't know, 20, I'll, I'll say like 24 and 27. Um. Because before I had the 240, like, cheapest coilovers I could find. My preload was all the way up. I took every collar off. Like, that car was dumped. Um, my sway bar still is, like, ground flat on the front. Mm-hmm. And I was, like, super about that low life over everything else. Like, couldn't get into places, couldn't go over speed bumps. You know what I mean? Um, and when I left and came back, so even with the Alteza, I didn't. Well, we lived on base though. I think that was different. I think if, if, excuse me, I think if I didn't have to be going over speed bumps, I probably still would have had it, you know, relatively low. I've, but admittedly, I've never been into like super, super low, super bouncy, miserable to drive. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like the two, the 240 still wasn't bad, but, but when you see these videos of these guys that are like scraping, just existing, you know what I mean? Like yeah. that's when I go, what the fuck? Like, how is that even mildly enjoyable? It looks terrible going down the road almost always. Um, It's just, I don't know. Maybe well, I've always been, it's maybe it's just a preference thing. I don't know. Have you ever seen those videos of like those Japanese, like, uh, where they'll have the, the car shows and, uh, they'll show them coming into the parking lot and like the whole goal is to get into the parking lot without ripping your front bumper off. So they'll yeah, like yeah. have like the, you know, you have the two styles, <laughs> you have the people that put down the wood and try to like inch in or the guys that just fucking send it and like jump yeah. right off into that bitch. I don't that get was... it. Like at that point, just trailer your car to the shows. If it's just going to be a, a, a show car, but then you have people that are committed because you get like bonus points. It's like, yeah, I'm static, bro. Like, I don't even have fucking a spine anymore, bro. It's just dust. Like, <laughs> one of my favorite gifts is like that. I think I sent it to you. It's like when you try to go for a relaxing drive, but your car is static and you're like, the thing is like bouncing along the road and it's like playing sad boy music. I don't know, man. Like, after it's, I was going to yeah. say, after leaving Japan and coming here, I would have to say the roads here are probably the worst in the world outside of like a third world country like it's terrible yeah. so are I you ha- serious yeah dude it's really bad so i had I mean, some um i forgot what the brand of the coilovers were on the gtr and like you know to be forever to get it registered and then i went out for a drive with jump and i was like you know this is the inaugural drive let's have fun and i pull out of the driveway get into the main road and things just like bouncing all over the place i couldn't even drive it straight because it would jump around on the road so like <laughs> you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna fucking I balled out on some like HKS super or hypermax coilovers. Like this will fix the problem. And they were like 10 times harder. And it's like, dude, like I'm getting like compressed disc in my neck trying to drive around. (laughs) And so I'm really seriously considering putting fucking bags on the stages just because it's like, it's not cool to be like, you can go just as low and you can get a much more compliant ride. And it's just, I'm kind of over it. Yeah, I'm kind of on the bag strain too. Um, I'll leave the SEMA static for a while. I actually just bought different springs. So I'm kind of a hypocrite because we're having this conversation and I'm going like 20K on the SEMA. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm just doing it so I can fit my wheels. I 
I, um, yeah, I don't know, man. I just, that, that lifestyle is not appealing to me anymore. You know, like the SEMA is, is low ish, but it's not dumped, you know, like, I think there's a big, big difference too in the VIP community and, and the drifting community, I suppose, between like a Chocolatan, like just low car style and then like scraping every single place you go. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I, I think those are very different things. Um, even though that they kind of fall into the same vein, they fall both into that kind of VIP low car style, but they're both wildly different. Um, because like you said, like, I remember, do you remember arms meeting? That was a few years ago. That was like the the famous like jump photo for these VIP cars where they'd have like front wheels totally off the ground. Do you remember mm -hmm. what I'm talking about? No, but I can Google it real quick. Yeah, just type in like, I don't know, Japan arms meeting or something like that. Um, or arms meeting SEMA. The, I think the SEMA was like the most popular photo. Mm -hmm. um, but dude, it was insane. It was like, oops. I'm sorry, Jared. I typed in Japan arms meeting and it's just a bunch of pictures of people like selling guns. So I think I'm going to have to uh, re-attack on this one. Oh, yeah, probably. I'll find it Arm later. <laughs> People are going to think you're like <laughs> threats to national security. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it was it was freaking sick, dude. Mm -hmm. But they were like legit having to like jump into the meat and they put the meat in, in the worst place. They did it in a, like a quarry. Mm -hmm. Um I think it's just, I think that's part of it. I feel like when they're organizing these meets, they're like, what's the craziest thing we can put these car owners through? <laughs> you know, like, how can we really fuck them up? Um, yeah. Because how many videos do you see that are like VIP roll-ins and then it's these cars like lined up for blocks and they just <laughs> are trying to get over the curb to get in, you know? Can you yeah. imagine being a regular car owner and you're like, what the fuck are these guys doing? Like so pissed <laughs> driving by them or like all the traffic behind them, dude. Yeah. If that was in the States, that would be an absolute nightmare. Yeah. So I was, I kind of took a deep dive and in looking in to see, uh, if you go on Stance Nation, you'll see all about this shit, but there's a shop that specifically specializes in building these super low slam cars and the shit that they got to do to get them to be even remotely drivable. Like I forgot, I think it was a SEMA or like, I think it was a Lexus LS series or whatever. And right. the entire floor, like everything had to be raised up. <laughs> You yeah, know, relative to so all the exhaust was going <laughs> through the cabin, freaking, and they had these metal plates to go across Dude. the entire floor, and it was still undrivable. It was like an inch off the ground. It was like less than an inch off the ground. And he's like, "I wanted a drive. My whole goal is to have a drivable VIP car." And it's like you did all this. You spent all this money, and if you hit one fucking, if you try to go into Coco's at the wrong angle, it's over for you. <laughs> you sound so <laughs> mad right now. <laughs> I mean, I think if you're an inch off, if you're an inch off and everything is tucked, that's really not that bad. Like, it sounds like it's bad, but for a style, like that style of car, that's really not bad. Mm -hmm. Considering that people legit do scrape down the road, which is literally zero inches of clearance. You know what I mean? Um, that's how the the Celsius was when I had it. I dumped it on those Garsons, and I was tucking mm -hmm. 19s in the back, and then the fronts, I was... I don't think I was tucking, but I was close. And... Uh, it scraped just existing and it wasn't bad, but it was, it scraped the exhaust like the whole way. So that's what I mean is if you could tuck everything up and not have to worry about it, that would be kind of dope. And I think that's, that's look at me fucking arguing for this dude. And I think that that's cool. Um, because it's like, there is a safety hazard in it, right? Like all your fuel lines go to the back, all your brake lines go to the back. Like if you were to puncture anything, and I did, I had a friend that had an EK Civic hatchback, the Midori green, like limited edition. It was fucking sick as shit. And he was slammed on some 15s. And sure enough, dude, he went over a bridge and some rebar was popped out and it caught his fuel line and lit his car on fire. He blew up. Um, Let's have a moment of silence. Okay, we're back. And we're back. Um, <laughs> rest in peace to Cody's EK Civic. I, well, and I've heard, I'm not referring to that right. I've heard that the hatchbacks aren't EKs, that the EK is just the, the coupe. Mm -hmm. I don't know how true, I don't know Hondas, dude. I'm not going to yeah, expound them. on that. But yeah. Um, but yeah, so there is like an inherent danger to just being slammed. Yeah. I mean, if I sound salty about it, it's because I am. It's because when I had the chaser, which was not even like slammed, it was just low. Dude, the amount of shit I went through with that car, freaking like within like a month of owning it, I like split the front bumper because like you can't see and you're trying to go over like curbs and shit. And you're like, I yeah. think I got it. And then all you hear is like, Grr! 
and just like the fiberglass <laughs> bumper like exploding freaking i was driving i went to an onsen one time with jumbin and we were coming back and you know we we're just chilling jamming out to some music and all i hear is something scraping across the ground and i get out and the exhaust just fell off and i'm like what the fuck <laughs> like what did i even hit what did, what did it fall off did it fall off the hangers yeah it fell off the hangers luckily it was oh, the, the very you. back hanger so i was able to like reach under there and rehang it but it was hot as shit so i'm like burning yeah. my hand <laughs> dude and all the times i got stuck in the snow and that thing okay granted that's my fault i had no business driving this damn car in the snow but fucking there's a video that someone got on masawa gearheads of me like just after a fresh snow leaving like uh um, i was doing some training and i'm trying to get I stopped at a stop sign and I'm trying to get enough momentum to like get going again. And I'm just right. rocking back and forth. And you remember how loud that car was? It's just me outside of the yeah, door. It was like, super eh. loud. I was just fucking burning rubber in that bitch. And I was like, I hate this. So I, I, I from my experience, <laughs> I imagine it's impractical. But you know what? If I was on air ride, I could have just swoop, swoop. I just hit the fucking swoop, swoop. On that bitch. That, that was gone. a great air ride impression, dude. <laughs> <laughs> swoop, swoop. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god now my dog's acting up what do you want oh tell that girl i said what up i said my dog boy oh yeah boy i thought you were talking about jumping i was like <laughs> i mean her too she can say i can say hi to her that's cool um yeah you know, i i've definitely know. had that dude i took my car to an exhaust my 240 years ago when i first did my sr20 swap it didn't mm -hmm. come with the lower half of the header so i took a header i found that that the, the hard body d21s had the same lower header but a completely different angle to go mm -hmm. out right and so i took it to an exhaust shop and i was like hey i need the bottom half of this header modified which is apparently illegal or, or shops don't like doing it because it's like messing with emissions mm -hmm. basically they don't like to mess with anything pre-cat you know like they'll do anything post-cat but that was an issue i ran into so I, like i went to several shops that would be like no i'm not going to do this for you and then i finally found one and uh, i was like hey i need you to cut this header for me make it straight and like close to the body you know mm -hmm. and then and this was when i was still low and then i was like and then make me just like a custom straight pipe that goes all the way back and so they did the worst exhaust job i've ever could have asked for i wrote <laughs> dude i drew on i drew on a post-it note and i was like okay i want you know this kind of exhaust and i want you to weld flanges into it so that i can unbolt this thing in different places if i need to you know so i was like do one flange kind of where the cat would be do another flange by the rear subframe um, and make it a multi-piece exhaust so that I can take this thing apart and then do like two two inch pipes that go straight out the back and they stick out from the bumper like three inches you know what I mean like a pretty like not crazy JDM straight pipe but something that's kind of inspired by that mm -hmm. and uh, yeah it's just like you know it can be single all the way back and then turn into a dual after the subframe and they came back to me with I went to pick the car up and they they put one of those really cheap Y pipes on the very end. And and I'm serious, like you could see where they convened, like from the back of the car. It was like uh -huh. boop. And it was like this long total. It was like maybe five inches long of just that Y pipe. And then the rest of it was straight all the way back. They didn't weld any <laughs> flanges in. So it was a one piece exhaust from the 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 half of my header all the way through to the back of the car. <laughs> and they welded um two hangers on it for me where there should have been four. Um, it was the worst exhaust ever, dude. And I was just about to leave to go store that car for four years. You know, I, I was moving like that was when I was going to Japan. And this was maybe a month before I was leaving it. But I was like, I need to drive this car. And I was driving it open header. And I was like, I, I can't be doing this. Mm -hmm. And um, I wasn't driving it open header, but I, <laughs> I, I need it anyways. So worst exhaust ever and so that would do the same thing it would fall off the two hangers like if it rained it would fall off the hangers instantly because they welded them also like on an angle to where they would just slip out or whatever it's not like it would just hang you know mm. or or it, it was like inclined to fall out so every time it rained or whatever or even just going to work it would fall off and i'd hear a drag and then i have to pull over and it was the worst experience of my life this would happen every day and sometimes it would happen <laughs> multiple times on my way home dude it was the jankiest most ghetto thing but i was like i have no time to get this fixed like yeah. i don't have the money to get this fixed this was like broke me you know right so when i say i'm unfucking my 240 i am like i finally have a proper exhaust it doesn't mm -hmm. it's still a straight pipe but at least i can unbolt it <laughs> Yeah, dude, I hate shit like that because it gives me anxiety. Like, it takes away the fun of getting in your own car. Like, you, like, I don't know about you, but for me, I get like a pit oh, in my yeah. stomach when I'm like, okay, I'm going to get in this thing. From the second I turn the key, no telling what can happen. It's a fucking roller coaster. 
Right. See, now I'm finally at a, at a good point in the 240 where I get in and I'm like happy and I'm mm -hmm. like, this is nice. You know, like this is a nice car. Like it has a couple issues, but it turns up every time or it turns on every time I get in it. It's comfortable. It looks nice. Like I'm at a good point and I can drive it and nothing scrapes. I don't bottom out. You know what I mean? I'm like, this is an enjoyable vehicle now. Mm -hmm. And the last time it was like this was probably eight years ago. Um, so, yeah, I think there's definitely a. I don't know. Yeah, there's there's just, I think, a sweet spot where it's it's it depends on the purpose of the car, too. You know, like the SEMA is not going to be enjoyable for me to drive just period. Mm -hmm. Like it'll be enjoyable to see people's reactions and to be in the car and how it looks. But like, I don't expect it to be comfortable. I don't expect it to be practical. You know, I'm certainly not trying to like daily it to work. Um, but yeah, I think it depends on what you're wanting to do. Yeah, I can't wait to see that thing because I've seen it. I saw that thing from when you first got it, which even then it was pretty awesome. So seeing that like evolution, like seeing the, the your vision come true, that's kind of cool. I'm excited on it, man. Yeah, I've, I've been like picturing that car a certain way for since I've had it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And this is the closest it's ever been. But I'm also driving it the least I've ever driven it. So you, it's like, do you want to drive it and enjoy it? Or do you want it to look the way you want it to? You know, it's like, at least for this style, it's kind of a toss up, especially when it's not a daily driver and I don't need to drive it. Mm -hmm. um, well, this is what you do. So. You build it so it's completely slammed and undrivable. You tow it to the entrance of the show. You take it that. off the tow truck and just drive it in like that. Boom. <laughs> Instant clout. <laughs> <laughs> this is a clout kit. I'm putting together a clout kit, a class for people that want to come. To oh, master dude. Class. <laughs> dude let's make a <laughs> fake trailer for this master class oh my god that's such a good idea um so we also have uh kind of going off of the same thing is like what's the cringiest mod you can do to your ride um and i'm just going to start off the bat and say if you have those spiked lug nuts or spiked wheel hardware for multi-piece wheels i think that looks terrible mm. that's my that's my hot take yeah. I don't think it's that hot of a take, but I've noticed that those kind of pop up now on like hot boy builds. And I just, it's just not good. Like, I don't think it's ever <laughs> going to be good. I think extended lug nuts look fine, you know, like the aluminum racing nuts mm -hmm. or whatever, um, or colored or colored wheel hardware. Like sometimes they can look good. I would also say like a lot of people really mess up on the wheel hardware or mm -hmm. just faces in general. This is maybe an unpopular opinion, maybe a popular one. I don't know yet, but I think any time that you powder coat the faces of a wheel a completely different color other than like the silver, black, or maybe white that they came on, I think it looks cringy. If you have like pink VSKFs, 80% of the time, I'm going to think it looks like ass. I can get down with gold, gold centers. I can get down or with bronze. Yeah. yeah. I think there's like very specific like. And maybe that's just me being ingrained with like, okay, the wheels should be this color. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Or like factory options. But then it's, I don't know. As soon as you paint your wheels like a, a really obscure or like blatantly, you know, flashy color, to me, it just gets kind of corny. Yeah. So I kind of second the thing with the spike lug nuts. But on some cars, I, I kind of can fuck with it. Like 326... Uh, this is 326 power or whatever i know they do that on a lot of their cars but it looks good but it's because their entire car kind of fits that aesthetic like that over the top unnecessary aesthetic so it makes sense to have the spike lug nuts on there but um i was gonna say so for my cringiest mod and i hate this and if i see it again i might throw up in my mouth i hate when people take the rocket bunny fenders <laughs> and put them on cars that a, they weren't made to fit. Like they, you know, mm. do the work. And I'm just over the that Rocket Bunny like look. That's a quality take. Like that's I, a very we should have it. opened with this. This is the <laughs> most drift relevant topic we've had all episode. <laughs> um, no, that's a very good point. And I've just seen actually there's a there's a SEMA that was featured in Super Street that was the same thing. They had mm -hmm. these super wide fenders on it. And it's like I respect the work that went into it, but at the same point, it just doesn't look good. Like it doesn't match the lines. And I think that's what you're getting at too, right? Is like, it just doesn't match the car because it wasn't made for that chassis. Yeah. Like the, it, first off, so they're not, they're never legit rocket bunny kits. They're always like, you know, <laughs> fucking shit from China, which I'm not knocking, you know, get, get yours however you can. But they, the guy that makes those freaking, uh, I can't remember his name, but he has like a computer, uh, rendering software where he'll render right. on the specific car that's the car was made to go on 
it looks good on this very specific car. Right. And then fucking Jim Bob takes it and just like slams it onto another car. It's like, and then he <laughs> shows up at a car show. It's like, dude, this does not look good. This is terrible. And I know if I get up close and I could, there probably be gaps between the the fucking kit and the right. actual fender. It's just, you know, I don't want to sound like a hater, but I'm hating. Okay? Nah, sound like a hater, dude. Put but, my hater you know, shades on. Just yeah. stop. Just stop. Like, at least if you're going to do the work, at least mold it into the body. I mean, come on. Right. Or, or like do the, do the fiberglass work to make it fit better. Yeah. There are some cars I've seen. I did see a Mark III Supra. I went to Supras in Vegas last year, mm-hmm. and there was a Mark III Supra that had a kit on it that didn't, you know, obviously wasn't for the car, but it didn't look terrible. Like it actually looked pretty good as far as the body, you know, lines and everything went. The only thing that was off was like there was fitment by the bumper where they were just very obviously different. And I was like, if you had taken those and like fit it for your bumper and your body you know what i mean it would have been night and day like so much better mm-hmm. um no nah, that's a good point dude i think yeah that's a good one how am i gonna top that one i mean i can't think of any other cringy mods aside oh, from well i got a runner up i can go all day oh fucking, shit if i see one oh, more crown royal bag fucking shift boot I'm that's a good one window that's a good one i'm jumping yeah. smooth out the window I mean, I guess it was cool back in the day. It was, I bet the first person that did it was like, holy shit, I'm about to start an entire fucking wave. But now, 20 years on, it's like, it's time to let that, let's take it out to the pastor and shoot in the back of the head. But yeah. uh, And then like the little samurai sword shift knobs. I mean, pretty much anything that was popular in Japan. And I don't think the Crown Royal thing started in Japan. It might have. I don't know. But anything that was popular like 20 years ago, it's time to lay those things to rest. Yeah, I think, you know, isn't it funny? Do you remember the beer tap shifter craze? I was just thinking about that, yeah. That was a weird one. I had it. I mean, I can't hate on it because I had them, but that was weird. They were also wildly impractical to shift with. (laughs) And for mine, the guy I bought them from, um, you know, tapped a fitting into it so that it could screw onto your thing. But Uh if you're shifting from the fucking top like a truck driver, (laughs) it you'd be you think about the leverage you know what i mean yeah and so i would end up like shifting them and i would be gentle as shit bro because i'm like i don't want to break this but um even then it's like it would get loose over time and i'd be shifting from the base um yeah. not me you gotta fucking you gotta fucking, you know what i'm saying <laughs> and i'd shift it i'd be shifting from the base just so that i didn't fuck that thing up i ended up taking it off and going back to just a regular shifter um, I really don't like the uh, the new shifter extensions. Have you seen those? I shouldn't say new, but like mm-hmm. as far as crazes go, are it's you like talking about uh, like the main one? I, I think, think you, of, I you have, have one, one, don't you? <laughs> I don't use it no more. It's in a box in the garage somewhere. <laughs> so I, dude, I thought it was the coolest thing ever. It was a We Are Likewise. It's a company that makes shifters. They make decent shifters, but they also make like crazy long extensions. And I didn't just have a regular extension. I had extension and then an extension on top of that. So it's like a two piece. So it's like long as shit. Dog. But the reason why I had it is because I, so I had these seats. And in order for me to fit in there properly, I had to slide the seat all the way back. I couldn't slide it forward because it w- they were um, the um, SR3s out of like a Civic, like the red ones. But they were yeah. too wide. So they would only fit if I like had it sitting all the way back. So in order to drive, I had to <laughs> lean all the way back. So I had to like get the extended shifter so I can like properly shift. And dude, I took that thing to Donnie <laughs> and I felt so dude. bad because I knew he was going to talk shit about it. And he like he he didn't say anything explicit. He kind of like threw a little subtle shade. He's like, I don't know about that shifter, but yeah, you know. He, that's <laughs> for him, dude. That's like, what the fuck are you doing for him? That is. <laughs> that's like you're fucking up a cliff at that point. <laughs> i um yeah or or like fake steering wheels which we've talked about but mm. but it more so than like a fake nardi even i think the cringy ones are like the white wood or plastic or whatever they're made out of mm. would that have like the neochrome inner spokes yeah those look so cheesy to me they they, they do and they exactly. always have i've never yeah. i've never thought that those look good ever you know even when they came out like 10 years ago 12 years ago whatever yeah i mean i don't know chrome really popped off yeah 
if you if you're about to say we're not hating, we're absolutely hating. No, I was gonna say we're not tastemakers. Like we're not here to say what's good and what's not. Good. That's true. That's, that's true. The things so there's some things that you could just look at and be like, that's not it, dog. Like I don't know. Have you seen NRG's? Uh, I, th- I think it's NRG. They make a new bucket seat, and I think this is specifically for her. Uh, it's like a pizza chair, like the yeah the, the yeah, thing yeah. <laughs> just looks like pizza and i would never drive with something like that but they do know. have some prints that i'm i'm like all right that's pretty sick because they yeah. did one that was like teal i think and mm-hmm. it had it looked like an arizona can i think it had mm-hmm. like well i shouldn't say that but it was teal and it had like cherry blossoms on it mm-hmm. i was like all right that's pretty dope you know what i mean or my buddy's got one that's like neon green like in terms of aesthetically i think they can look okay yeah but you there's do always like the just entire theme Right, right. And like there's nothing wrong with just having a black seat, you know, mm-hmm. or like the 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 sparkle back on the brides or whatever. Like that is such a classic look. Just yeah. to be like just black, dude. Just all black, everything always looks good. It's gonna <laughs> I think so. That's where I'm at. It's not that I hate all these different colors popping off. It's like if you want to do, you know, a teal blue interior on your 240, do it, but just know that in like five years it's gonna be out of style. Yeah. Um, whereas I think for me, it's like, I'm not going to put money into something that's just going to go out of style in four years anyways. And so it's like, I'd rather just have a black interior that looks pretty factory because that's going to, that's going to stand the test of time. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how you are, but I go scroll down my Instagram sometimes and see some of the stuff I did like on my guitar specifically. And it's like, what was I smoking, bro? Like I got a freaking uh, speed hunters toe strap. And I just like jammed it in one of the fucking intakes on the front of the bumper. And I was like, this looks so cool. And I drove around like that for like three days. And I was like, what the fuck am I doing? So I just like <laughs> took that out. And, you know, I pretty much settled on the idea that like they got it right from the factory. It doesn't need any more. Hey, uh, let's right. take a quick break. I need to let the dog out. Bet. I was literally just about to wrap up the episode. <laughs> well, j- just give me five minutes because he's crazy. Let it out. We'll take a Hey, put on the intermission screen. We're going to take we'll both take a break. There is no intermission screen. This is what you Oh, sh- damn it. Yes, I'm empty chairs. You know what? I'll hang out with Chad. What's going on? We're going to talk about all of the uh, the different shit that I've seen things popping in. What I'm trying not to do is I'm trying not to talk about um, all of these topics as they come up. Just because I don't want the podcast itself on the platform to feel like a live stream. You know what I mean? Like this time around... We we obviously brought it up, um, but I don't want people listening on their streaming platforms to to just be sidetracked with oh, and we got another question from so and so, and now a question from so and so. I think it would just help the flow of just the listeners' show, you know, to to just get through the topics, and then at the end we'll we'll kind of answer everything. But I do want to touch on some things that I don't think we did touch on. Uh, Charlton, I think the big one for sif- sim drifting is just buy a wheel, you know, like it's, that's the, now that being said, I started on, um, just a controller. I did an Xbox controller for a while and Assetto was one of the most gratifying drifting games to play with a controller because you didn't have to steer that much. You would use the thumbstick as like correction. Um, but even when you were mid drift, you could let go of the thumbstick and just use throttle. And that would kind of alter, you know, how much angle you had, which I really liked because that's what real drifting is like, is like once you transition and you catch the wheel again, it's, you're not, you're making minor adjustments. You know what I mean? It's not. And even when you're driving, um, very, very few people will actually like hold the wheel and do all the, and I'm holding it like this because typically with drifting, you don't want to be touching it on the top, your, your best bet, at least in my experiences, um, try to grab the wheel from the bottom so that when you're transitioning or driving or whatever, you're not crossing your arms like crazy. You're not reaching over yourself for things. It just helps to keep all your shit organized. And so if you hold it at the bottom or on the sides, it gives you a lot more control than trying to be up here or one hand it. Um, even when I would one hand it, I would still one hand it from the bottom. Um, so for me personally, I would tilt the wheel all the way up um, to make grabbing the top of the wheel impractical. And so I would just grab it on the bottom and it was so comfortable, dude. Like you can watch some of my videos, but it was like, 
that just felt so good for me. And so that's my recommendation for everybody. But anyways, so that's why I really liked the controller on the drift sim setup was because it was like, you didn't really have to steer input just like how you're, when you're drifting, the wheel does all the work and you just kind of catch it and moderate angle. That's what it felt like in the game for the controller. But then if you want to take and level it up, then of course, by the wheel. Um, and I think when you do the wheel, start with um, tracks or, or uh, stability on because it'll, and Darius might disagree with me on this one. I see that you're back, but um, I, th I I started with stability on because what it'll do is it'll only go a full rotation side to side. Not even, it'll it'll go right, will go half a turn and left will go half a turn, which makes catching it a lot easier, I think, and moderating it. When you turn off stability control, you get the full like two and a half rotations, you know, one and a quarter side to side, which can make things a lot trickier if you're not comfortable yet with like throwing and catching the wheel and stuff like that. But stability off is definitely the most realistic. And I talk about this with Darius all the time is like when when he was drifting on the sim, he was crushing it, dude. He'd be like, Whoop, and then he'd be like throwing a backy in and then he'd come back around. And I was like, I was like, Oh shit, we're really out here. We're like, <laughs> he didn't, of course he didn't turn the chair. Cause that would be, that would be a fucking, can you imagine dude? You're like, your, your wheels here and then you're driving and then you're like, Oh shit. You're like, trying to, you're like feet are fucking behind you. Um, but, uh, yeah, it was, it was, it's the most realistic because you can also adjust the um, feedback on your wheel to be stiffer and, and, you know, or you can have it be really floaty and like almost no feedback. So you can make it feel as real as you can without there being like a physical G force to, to feel the car. Um, but that would be my recommendation, dude. I didn't have multiple monitors. I didn't really even have a good computer when I started. I do now. So now I've got the, I do VR with it, which is fucking the tits, bro. Um, and honestly, when I started the wheel, I was doing third person. I wasn't even drifting in the cockpit um, because you couldn't look around. And then when you get comfortable in the cockpit, uh, you can download apps. I mean, there's apps where you can look where you're going. Oh, what's up, Jong Ben? I turned down my mic, so that won't be on the podcast. Damn it. Uh, <laughs> there's apps where you can look where you're going that are, that run third party so that when you're in game and say you're like drifting this way, your eyes will auto turn to whatever angle you're drifting at. And it just kind of automates everything, you know? So when you're going this way too, it'll, it'll turn and shift your view. Um, I really, really liked that for running a single monitor. It was sick, mm -hmm. but a yeah. lot of time, dude, I've probably put like 200 plus hours on Corsa, which even then sounds like a lot, but it's not that much. Yeah. Uh, just real quick, so if you are wondering about like what wheels and stuff actually to get, I'll be you, back. you just want to freaking DM me, but I'll throw out some uh, quick like shout outs. So I use a Thrustmaster, T, I think it's called a TSPC, which is like the step up from the T500. Basically, the what you want is something that's modular, so where you can change the wheel out so you can put um, an actual size steering wheel on it. Because most sim uh, rigs have steering wheels that are smaller than, you know, an actual wheel. So you want something like a Thrustmaster, like a Fanatic, where you can take it out and put an actual size one on. That'll help a lot with, like, the drivability and whatnot. And you're going to want something where you can actually position yourself properly. Um, so, like a, like, a sim stand or something like that. Those are super cheap to get. I've got, like, the full Monty set up over here. And even this, this isn't, like all that crazy this is kind of like a, a medium range setup that i got but um yeah y'all see my banana pants out here <laughs> it's like jared was saying like you want to you want to set it up to mimic real life as much as possible because if you don't do that you're going to get bad habits and then you're going to try to go out there and like do it for real and you're going to fucking drive into a fucking wall so i would yeah I was very seriously impressed with you. And I, I, I've already said this on the podcast, but I tell people that all the time. I'm like, yeah, my friend learned how to drive on a sim and he like crushed it in real life. Mm -hmm. um, and then I, I, I just told them, I mean, you probably were here for that. I'm just trying to uh, address some of the chat items because I don't want to address them as we're recording so that it doesn't affect the, the listen, you know, mm -hmm. the, the streamed podcast. Um, dude, Charlton was coming through with the ideas, anime fleshlight on the side. <laughs> well, so, <laughs> Can you imagine like a fleshlight yeah. Chan and it's like they're, you know. Fleshlight well, I imagine like a chick on top of the fleshlight, like riding it like a witch's broomstick. Oh, my like off God. Into, like the sunset. <laughs> <laughs> 
I might have to get on Forza and do that, but that might end up in a lifetime ban. Oh my God, dude, that's, <laughs> that's awesome. Um, uh, always 2234 said by followers and viewers. Uh, no, thank you. Thanks for the shout out always. Thanks for the shout out always. Hot take. Modern reps are now nearly as good as the original copies. That is a hot take. Um, well, so I, I do, do have... see what you're saying. Go ahead. Should we just save this for an episode? Because I do feel like that's a really good talking point. Yeah, let's say this because I've actually had some some firsthand experience with this trying to like specifically for the GTR community, like trying to buy OG parts is unfeasible. But now you got people that are, you know, I'm just going to say it. Trying to nah. buy, <laughs> no, <laughs> save it, dude. Okay. Save it. I'll put it. In you the can write it. I, I'm not on a desktop. Can you put that on the document while we're here? Yeah, I'm sorry to blue ball you, Jonah, but it's happening. Damn. Um specific except oh examples yeah i was just asking in, in reference to that question the the names of forza uh what? i don't know what your name is darius i think you're sound of music aren't you yeah we'll we'll get we'll we can give you that um after we close out the podcast shit yeah we should just get this thing wrapped up um <sighs> did you want to give uh, us some flowers Cause I don't have any oh. uh, gems. Oh shit. We're doing flowers. <laughs> um, dude, I actually am going to give flowers and it's to one of our listeners. Okay. Um, his handle on Instagram is SR 20 gang. SR 20 gang. Okay. Good old speedles. Um, you should go check him out. He's building a really cool community online. Uh, you know, mainly tailored for car enthusiasts, but it's called Stylish Collective. It's a really, it's like, it's honestly super, super cool. I've talked to him before about this, but um, it's it's exciting to see people that are um, expanding the car community into something more than just in-person meets and car sales in person and events. You know what I mean? Like, I think that there is, that's the whole reason that we do this podcast is to not only grow a community, but to make this like a, a virtually tangible item that people can in, interact with and engage with. And I just think that the initiative that he's got going or she, I just shouldn't assume, um, I just think that that's so fucking badass, dude. Like, I think that that's so cool. And so it all kind of goes into the sphere, right? It's like I talked about earlier in the episode is um, I just, I lost my train of thought. Damn it. What was I talking about earlier in this episode? <laughs> you were giving some uh, flowers. To, to now, speak. I know what I was just doing, but I'm saying, <laughs> damn, you, you coming on me with some like early onset dementia type shit. You're like. <laughs> Alzheimer's, I mean, you're like, yeah, Jared, you were just talking about this. Yeah, I know what I was just talking about. <laughs> Shit, it was having to do with um, the community. What was I talking about, though? There was a specific point about, um, you know, building kind of, oh, when I was talking about the podcast, when I was saying, you know, how there were, when I when I looked at how many other podcasts were starting about drifting content and stuff, I got super discouraged. And I was like, nah, man, this, this sucks. Like, I'm just going to not do this anymore. But um, I, I think I always hyper fixated on like, I need to be the only person doing this or I need to be the best one to do it or whatever. And now it's to the point where my, my thought process is just, let's build something really cool for people and let's keep with it and be consistent. And online is massive. You know what I mean? It's not like, oh, there's two ramen restaurants in the same town. One of them's got to go. It's like online is worldwide and there is no shortage of content ever. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I think any initiative just to like build something and make it awesome is commendable. And I think that's super cool. So that's why I wanted to give flowers out. Um, so yeah, SR 20 underscore gang speedles, check it out. It's a pretty sweet initiative. Go show them some love. I got um, it up on the stream right now on his Instagram. Let's have oh, a nice. bunch of non SR 20 stuff going on here. Damn. <laughs> look at this. Look at this dude. That's a fucking sweet looking layout. Like, so Darius has been crushing it. He was like, "Hey, bro, we got to do these video live streams," um, and so obviously, as I already said, we're we're live streaming this, and so he just fucking whipped out this bomb ass layout out of nowhere on me. I've got transitions. Um, it's animated. Don't worry. Oh shit! Hold up. Did you animate it? <laughs> yeah, you, you'll see it in the format. for people listening on on regular platforms. They don't understand anything of going what's going on right now. 
um, basically Darius found a way to like play Jamie and put us to the side and then put whatever we're talking about as a big thing on the screen. That is so sick. Look I'm at changing you, man. my name to black Jamie. Dang black Jamie. I won't call you that. I'll just call you. B. You're James. Good. You got a pass. I don't like this pass. <laughs> 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 um, so yeah, those are my flowers for this episode. Uh, that's it, man. I, I think we hit a pretty good spot. As always, thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you for being part of the community and the podcast and uh, and everything. I'm going to put everything in the description. Again, officially unofficially brought to you by Lucky Labo. Use Team Labo at checkout for 15% off. Um, find us on social media. We've been super active. We've got some really cool content stuff going on. Um, now specifically, and I think I talked about this in the last episode too, but we are always you know, reaching out to new content creators, new drivers, um, expanding this thing even more. And so it's going to turn into something really fucking tight and I'm excited to start on it. We've already kind of started on it. If you go to Instagram, like you'll see what we're, what we're doing. Um, but it's going to be sick. And so I'm, I'm very excited for this. I'm excited to have this community here. We're going to be starting Forza shit. That's it. Find us on Forza. We'll put the shit on Instagram. Uh, we definitely talked about this like a month ago and we haven't done anything with it yet. So we need, we're going to start a Forza meet. We'll organize it, come out and drift with us and have some fun and voice chat. And we'll have a fucking sincerely Japan party. You got anything to add Darius? Yeah. Nope. Uh, Oh, don't forget to get yourself a sticker. If you haven't gotten one yet at sincerely Japan, I mean, uh, we got some more sticker colors coming and then we got a whole new revamp coming down the pipeline. So get you some of these stickers before they're gone because that might be it on those ones. Yeah, we got new colorways on the way. Thanks for listening. Peace. All right, let me pause for end my recording. Yeah, that was all over the place. Although I did have fun doing it. I, like I the, uh, carefree vibe. Well, right. And that's what I wanted was just to kind of bullshit for an episode because like the past few episodes we've just been talking a lot about mm -hmm. like current events which is fine you know like it's fine and, and obviously we still get to sprinkle our opinions in there but i do kind of miss just the format of like bullshitting on stupid stuff mm -hmm. um yeah jonah we're gonna save the reps topic because i want that to actually be like a you know it, its own I, I think that's like a whole conversation in itself and so i didn't want to dive into this whole other topic when this episode already ran over like 20 minutes it um, deserves some attention so it gonna... yeah and that deserves more than just like an off rip you know uh yeah here's what i think about it like that's a whole topic that darius and i could really dive into mm -hmm. and i want to research that a little bit more too because i think you're right I'm wondering if there's any like actual data that could back it up um because as that stuff like deteriorates over time obviously the metal doesn't become as as strong um and so I'm, I'm actually curious now if there's like a, you know, anything that's been done, like any sort of study or test or whatever. I think that'd be really interesting. Yeah. Uh, let's see if we had anything else in the chat while we're here to touch on, just so we don't leave people hanging on. I did see your comment, Joan, about all, uh, all coilovers should be able to be rebuilt. I second that. Although yeah, I think I most of them are too. I think like now unless you're buying a budget coilover, I think most kind of offer that service. You know, I, I know Park Shop Max does, Fortune Auto feel, like all of the big contenders, BC Racing. Um, I, don't, I think so like... I've always, my only experience with it, so I had some, is it Tains or Tien? I think tain. it's Tain. Yeah, I had some that tain. I wanted to get redone and I saw that they advertised it on their website, but it was in J Japanese and I didn't know how to like organize getting, mm. getting them sent there and getting them back. And then I had some, uh, the br I can't remember the brand. It's like kind of an obscure brand, but they still make a, a bunch of coilovers for a lot of stuff and they're really good. They just needed like a little bit of stuff and I wanted to have them rebuilt. There's no like independent rebuilders and it's not the kind of thing that you can right. really uh, take over yourself. I think, dude, and I wonder if you could though, because I've, I remember talking with Barkus when we were over in Japan and he was saying how like a lot of the coilovers share the same thread pitch for the main like strut body. Mm -hmm. I would need to look into that, but I'm very curious if you could legit, like the only hard part would be 
the mounts themselves. You know what I mean? Like unless the mounts are seized to the actual strut body, I feel like it would be relatively easy to swap out struts and springs if need be, given that you could just order like Swift springs for anything. Like the top hats generally don't go bad. And even if when they do, you could probably get a new pillow ball, you know? Mm -hmm. And I see in the comments, uh, John was saying he had the Flex Z. I, th I can't remember if that's the exact one I had. They oh, were like oh, oh. But, yeah. Um, I wonder if you could rebuild them in different markets. But yeah, I think anything like that, that's uh, like an off the shelf coil over, you know, Blitzes, Tanes, uh, Megans. I know for sure you can't rebuild Megans. Um, I'm, I'm I, I think anything that's off the shelf, no. But I think anything like built to order would be probably, yeah. Well, even the though Flex they're more expensive. Z and a lot of those other ones you mentioned are meant to be budget. So I'm wondering if it's even worth the cost of like paying to send it back and have it rebuilt than just buying that's, a new set. Right. I think that's the idea. That's why, you know, like higher end ones, like whenever I think of high end, I always think of like Aragosta or Aragasa, however you say it. Right. And I'm Olin's. sure you can rebuild those or yeah, like Olin's because they cost like four or five grand to get a set. Right. So you damn well better rebuild my shit. <laughs> For real, dude. Yeah. We didn't even talk about it too. I'm gonna use this episode as our first one to to use a different outro song, mm. which I'm excited on. Are you talking about the one that the guy that you uh, hit up? Yeah, boy. So, also for those of you in the chat, this is a sneak peek. We're gonna be doing a new segment where we reach out to artists that we really like, and we use different outro songs for each episode because Darius and I both really like music too. Um, and so we could use that as an outlet, so long as we can get clearance to use these things. Um, kind of share our music taste and embed that a little bit more into the podcast as well yeah but you have yeah anything that was a good episode before dude. we sign off nah man so. i'm i gotta go yeah. <laughs> i was you can kind of see me during the live stream i keep looking out my window here because my neighbor's dogs got out and so i just see them like running around <laughs> <laughs> and i'm like like what are we doing over here what are we looking at sucks to suck although i can't relate because my dog would take off at a moment's notice oh mine would too yeah, yeah. Well, theirs got out, but it didn't like take off. It just was running around them, you know, like, ah, you ain't going to get me. What up? <laughs> dogs are assholes, dude. Like people talk about how cats are assholes. Dogs are definitely assholes. Yeah, they pretend to love you until they see freedom and they're like, Peace I'm out, saying, dude, they're like, I'm out. <laughs> All right, man, I'm going to hop right. off. Thanks. Thank you guys for hanging out. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Really this is a good time. And then every this will be pretty much every weekend, like at least once a weekend. I shouldn't say at least. It'll be once a weekend. Um, because in the off weeks, we're going to be doing those those short episodes that you can find here on Twitch and you can find them on the YouTube as well. Um, and then these, you know what I mean? So we're, that's how we're kind of divvying it is it'll be full episode short, full episode short, so on and so forth um, to kind of just push more content and reduce some of the, the time constraint, you know, because it does take a lot of time just to... Uh, just to do these and especially the episodes whereas the shorts it's like you just have to hop on the live stream you know download the live stream and put it on youtube like that's pretty easy so yeah but uh, actually i think we should save that reps one for the shorts for next weekend because i think that'll be a take up a good chunk of time yeah I, I need to look into that one a little bit more if, if it's going to be a full like 20 30 minutes you know what i mean but okay. anyways yep. we're signing right, off absolutely take later easy, thanks for watching Thank you.